All right, eyewear <laughs> retailer Warby Parker has been a pioneer since its founding in 2010. Its glasses start at $95 and allow customers to choose, ship, and try them on from the comfort of their homes. Fast Company named it one of the most innovative companies three years in a row. As other retailers close stores, Warby Parker has grown to 47 locations in 22 states. The latest just opened in Philadelphia, where it all began for co-founders and co-CEOs Neil Blumenthal and Dale, Dave Gilboa joining us now. Welcome to you both. Yeah. Or should we call you Mr. Warby and Mr. Parker? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Where did, first, where did the name come from? Because, because it's not your names. Yeah. It came from two early Jack Kerouac characters that uh, we discovered at the New York Public Library. Simple as that. Yeah. So <laughs> it's you're, a cool name. It yeah. is a cool name. This, when you started in Philly, when you guys were in, in, gra in grad school, what was the business model you thought was going to work here? Uh, we thought that it was going to be purely online because we wanted to sell our product directly to customers because that would allow us to bypass the middlemen right. and transfer all that saving to customers. Uh, but we soon found out is that people want to touch the, the glasses in, in person. Right. Um, and we launched the features in Vogue and GQ. The company took off like a rocket ship. We had a wait list of 20,000 people. People started calling up saying, hey, can we come to your office to try on glasses? And we, we were said, working. Uh, we yeah, don't we have an office. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it all started, Dave, because you lost a pair of glasses and you realized it cost too much. Yeah. It was, what was it, $600 you were told? Yeah, lost a pair of glasses that cost me $700. Yeah, yeah that really hurts. It's been <laughs> around for 800 years, didn't make any sense, and so we realized that we could cut out all the middlemen, all the unnecessary markups, and sell, design the, the product that we would love and, and want to wear and sell them direct to consumers for $95. But back look, to Neil's point, I remember going to your office, and we were just sort of, it was a warehouse look. You like my glasses? <laughs> yeah. So Warby Parker's today. I, wear, I have a lot of your stuff, <laughs> as you know. But it, you go to the office, it wasn't all that attractive. Fast forward to where we are to now, it's even affected how you design the stores because you never expected to have standing stores. Talk about the design and the experience you want us to have when we go in. Absolutely. So um, we launched exclusively online. Now we have 47 stores. We'll open 25 this year. Um, and uh, there are a lot of companies that are closing stores, and there's been you know, talk about the death of bricks and mortar. But um, for us, we're seeing any time we open a store, there's a, just an amazing reception from our customers. And we've really designed them to be um, fun and um, make it convenient for um, for customers where we all get the to touch are, the glasses, number one. Right. Instead of being um, instead of having frames behind lock and key, we have all the frames out in the open. Mm -hmm. uh, we've designed our own technology. So our, our point of sale is uh, on an iPad and we have um, just great uh, customer service, and so uh, we've really tried to make it as convenient and as fun as possible. And you have an optometrist in the store, yes. which I think is so great, yeah, an ophthalmologist, that is which is great. so. I mean, when I joined CBS this morning, Gail and Charlie said, well, you need new glasses, you should go to Warby Parker because yes. it's, it's inexpensive. I said, no, I've got a really bad prescription. It's always $1,000. Yes. said, no, it'll be 150 bucks when you go to Warby Parker. Yes. <laughs> and they were right. Yes. I mean, you, why are glasses so expensive not at your store but what is it and i learned it's a monopoly right yes. essentially a monop almost a monopoly yeah yeah there are two very large companies that actually just announced that they're, they're going to merge yeah so luxotica and essilor are going to merge and uh, be a 55 billion dollar company so uh, they own oakley ray-ban oliver peoples persol and arnett lens crafters foster grant sunglass hut that's all one company all one company but when you started you all didn't even think it was going to be a success you didn't even tell your parents that's how <laughs> have you ye have little faith you didn't you didn't even think that this was going to work yeah, so we we launched out of our apartments when we were um, students about seven years ago and we thought uh, students where um, at Wharton yes and you know we thought we had a good idea but we also talked to a lot of entrepreneurs that said you know just because you think you have a great idea just because you put up a website doesn't mean anyone's gonna come to it and now fast forward seven years we're uh, we just crossed the a thousand employee mark and oh. Um, something that we're really proud of is uh, through our buy a pair, give a pair program. Yes. We've distributed millions of pairs of glasses to people in need throughout the world. And you're because, going to Philadelphia. Because you point out, you point out that there are one billion people around the world who don't have access to glasses. It, it's crazy. And if you think about what that means to somebody's earning potential or ability to provide for their family. Or to learn. To learn. Yeah. So it, it immediately sets people back. We're finding that even in America, we have students getting misdiagnosed as special needs mm. um, when they just need a pair of glasses. So we now have a program here in New York City and in Baltimore in which we're going into city schools, providing uh, eye exams, and then providing glasses and actually designing glasses to allow kids to choose from a 
bunch of different options because we know if the glasses aren't cool, they're not going to wear them. Yeah. And that's now that's you're true. here because you're going to Philadelphia, going back home for going the home. first time, so that's great. Seven years. Yeah, we just opened our latest store in Probably. Philly, and so that was a fun homecoming, being back on campus and seeing um, all our, our old yeah. professors back in, in Philly. Congratulations. Yeah, continued success. It's just cool. great. Thank you. May I suggest add some more greens to the all line? <laughs> and <laughs> and green. smaller sizes for young children. Yeah. yeah. Other than that, it's great. <laughs> Did Gail and I tell you we have opinions yeah. on this? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Neil and Dave. Really continue. Didn't success. expect a customer survey Bra right on the show. <laughs> You're welcome.